Welcome to Education Today. I'm Chris Garitano, Armstrong School District's Multimedia Technician. Today we're going to take a look at a valuable group that helps out the school district in many ways every year. You may have heard of programs such as Do-Re-Mi, which puts instruments in the hands of students who otherwise may not be able to afford them. You may also have heard of a number of monetary grants that teachers are awarded every year. These grants help bring cutting-edge initiatives alive in our classrooms. You know those cool weather bug cameras that you see during the weather reports on the news? Well, one of our schools recently had one installed. How, you ask? The group responsible for all of this is the ASD Foundation, in partnership with the district's very own faculty and other major community businesses. The ASDF is a nonprofit organization that raises money to provide Armstrong School District students with enriching, exciting programs that might not otherwise be funded by local tax dollars. To talk more about this today, we have a variety of the organization's trustees, which we will bring on in different segments. They are Mrs. Lisa Lambert, President of the ASD Foundation, Mr. Tom Dinga, Vice President of the ASD Foundation, and Trustee Mr. Kirk Lorgan, and F&M Bank CFO Kristen Robertucci. First, we'll talk to Mrs. Lisa Lambert and Mr. Kirk Lorgan. Okay, welcome to the show, guys. Would you please tell us briefly about yourselves, your history with the Foundation? Well, I started with the Foundation back in 2005 um, when I was on the Parent Advisory Committee for the District, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, became a trustee and worked my way up to vice president and recently um, was elected president of the foundation so uh, just within the past year so this is my first year in uh, representing the foundation as its president okay. i uh, just to join the foundation two years ago i replaced one of our former uh, principals in the district who left and i'm the secondary representative as well as do a lot of things with the administration okay uh, now what is the main objective of the asd foundation well, it's, uh, our mission is expanding educational opportunities for our youth, and that is basically what we do. Um, anything, any opportunity that comes along that we feel is uh, worth being funded by the foundation, um, we try and do that for the kids. Okay. Now, um, there are a variety of different programs that the ASD Foundation offers or helps to support. Uh, what are some of the stories about how they are benefiting students? Well, I'd like to start off with the Do Re Mi. You touched on that briefly earlier, and I just think it's a fabulous program for our music departments. Uh, what it is is we ask the public to donate unused instruments, uh, used instruments for the for the uh, children of the district, and uh, in turn we send them off to Murphy's Music Center in Leechburg, and they generously refurbish them for us and send them back to us, and then we distribute to them, them to the kids who might not otherwise be able to afford an instrument. And right now, uh, we've been able to uh, supply about 60 instruments for kids in the district, which is wonderful. Yeah, and I know uh, this year we had, I know to start the, se the, the year we had a lot of instruments, and I think we have maybe one or two remaining, uh, both trombones, right, I think. Right. So. Um, now, there are many ways in which the foundation receives and can receive money from a variety of different donors. Um, for those who may be interested in donating, how can they go about donating to the foundation? Well, we have a website. It's on the school district's website, and uh, it's the last tab on the right when you go to the district's website. And within our website, you can see a PayPal button. And many people know what PayPal is if mm -hmm. they deal with uh, the internet very much. And you can donate through that with any major credit card. Um, you can send a check uh, directly to the foundation at the administration building. Um, you know, we also offer, uh, you know, at our outings when we have a golf outing or mm -hmm. so forth, anytime we're, we're in the community, you know, we'd be happy to accept any type of donation by check. Okay. Uh, now, earlier you, uh, we talked about edu educator grant uh, initiatives. Can you give us uh, any examples of uh, what some of the new ideas that have popped up this year? Well, um, one of the most recent ones, maybe, maybe Kirk, you would like to touch on that. Uh, with the, uh, we have a lot of opportunity. Every year, the the teachers apply for these grants, and generally, we like to get grants that are, you know, sustaining that can go from one year to the next, uh, that provide opportunities for more than just a particular classroom. However, there are occasions where um, maybe there's just one great program that that gets uh, if someone applies for a grant. And this year at West Shamokin High School. One of the grants that was applied for was a driving uh, distraction simulator, mm -hmm. and he's a gentleman that runs a business from Michigan. He's coming in. We're going to talk about this and do this on May 2nd uh, for prom week, 
Uh, and that's, those are just the kind of things that, that it could cost $2,500. The grant that we gave for the, from the foundation was $2,000, and then our SAD group at Western Mokin took care of the rest. And those are the kind of opportunities that, that the foundation likes to offer. Uh, it, it gives kids an opportunity to see uh, what can happen, great learning experiences for them, and, and these are things that otherwise wouldn't be done through district funds. Right. And we've also supplemented the district on a uh, robotics program this year. We gave a $5,000 grant, uh, which will um, help the, the district to implement its new robotics program throughout the district. So we're, we're real pleased to be able to do things like that for the district. Um, now, for those who may be wondering, generally anyway, what, are there any uh, requirements or restrictions that are in place when teachers apply for these grants? Well, the, there's the normal monetary requirements. I mean, you apply for either a $500 classroom, a $1,000 uh, school-wide, a $2,000 uh, department-wide, I believe, mm -hmm. and then the $5,000 district-wide. So there's the monetary constraints. And what we like to see are sustainable-type grants coming in. I mean, we're not going to fund uh, prizes for programs that the teachers are already, already have in place. It's new, innovative programming uh, that they uh, apply for and then we're, we're happy to fund you know anything that's innovated within the classrooms that gets the kids excited about education. Right. Um, now I understand that the foundation, uh, the foundation works very hard and it's comprised of a lot of different components. Um, I know that there were a couple of recently added uh, retired teachers from our from right here in the Armstrong School District added to the Board of Trustees. Um, what uh, makes up the Board of Trustees? What different components make up the Board of Trustees? Well, we have, um, number one, we have uh, administrators from the district who, like Kirk, who make up uh, some of our members. Also, we have teachers, current teachers, we have retired teachers, and we have um, community members from the general community, like myself, uh, like uh, Mr. Toy, Tom Toy, from formerly of Toy's uh, Golden Dawn. Uh, and uh, we also have Tom Denga, who is another administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, we just um, acquired Dr. Beverly Long, which is a wonderful addition. She just re recently retired from the district. Right. And uh, it gives even retired teachers some place to, to bring their talents. And, you know, we really enjoy that. Sue Bowser is another one. Uh, so. Okay, now there are two major things that have just been implemented. Um, the first uh, that we're going to talk about was just implemented also at West Shemokin High School. Um, Kirk, would you explain a little bit about what the weather bug about the weather bug technology and uh, what all is included with the recently installed version of it? Uh, you know, as everybody knows, the weather bug is, is on KDKA and, and it goes into the schools and it you know, tells what the weather is like at that particular high school that day in that area. Um, what we got was the, we went with the whole package. We have the lightning sensor, we've got the you know, the HD camera, and we actually set it up so it's overlooking our baseball field and softball field, but it can rotate and zoom around the entire building. Uh, this program was something that we had had a, a, a smaller version of the weather bug at West Shemokin High School, but it wasn't functioning properly. So I came up with the idea to talk with the foundation about the replacement of that because they have an educational component that can help all of our students in the district K to 12. Uh, and when I looked into it and investigated it, I got all the, the quotes and everything, and I came back to the foundation um, with those numbers. And it was, a, uh, it was great timing for us because at that point in time, our local business, uh, Genon, came in and wanted to donate some funds to the district through the foundation. And at that point in time, they had talked with us about programs like the weather bug, and, and ironically, and, and great for us. Mm -hmm. um, it was something right. that I presented to, to Mr. Mark Baird from Genon and they uh, graciously donated the money uh, just under $20,000 to implement this system. All right now um, uh, obviously this is a fantastic addition and uh, to the district because this doesn't only benefit or can it can not, not only benefit just one school it could benefit all schools and it can benefit all students and teachers um, K to 12. Um, so when I know that there are a lot of different elements that are involved in this and some of the things that were discussed before were different lessons that can be implemented. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, they have lessons for all grade levels. They have lessons for kindergarten, 
-hmm. all the way up through 12th grade. And it's easily accessible information for all of our teachers across the district. I just need to get, get them a password when it comes in and they can access that information. The community can access that information and see what types of lessons are being used district-wide just by clicking on the website and uh, that'll, the link that will be on the website at West Shemokin High School. Um, but those lessons talk about, you know, the weather, lightning, um, you know, how it affects, what kind of storm fronts there are. Mm -hmm. There are so many different things that can be taught. Our students are certainly going to benefit from this, from this program and the weather bug at West Shemokin. Right, a program that will continue to keep giving and uh, continue to be able to kind of, in a way, we talked about self-sustaining, kind of self-sustains itself um, so long as you can keep the camera operational. And um, I think that that will be something that the district uh, will really be uh, benefiting from here coming up. So um, when do you expect, I know the camera is at this point installed, uh, when do you expect uh, everything, to, the whole system to kind of be in the full swing of things, including, you know, maybe teachers even getting a, the opportunity to start investigating how they may want to use it? I expect it to be up and running any day, any day at this point in time. Uh, all, everything is installed, um, the weather bug itself, the lightning sensor, um, the, it's all installed. It's just a matter now of getting the technology figured out at both ends, not only through KDK, but in the school district. And mm -hmm. uh, I know that they're working on that very diligently at this point in time. So I would expect that at any moment you could see West Shemokin High School on KDKA's weather bug. All right. We look forward to seeing the district exposed in more light than just what we, you know, the, our programming here does. So uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be flipping through channels one of these evenings and or mornings and see it pop up and we'll know what to expect when we get into school that morning, huh? Uh, now, the ASD Foundation holds an annual golf outing. It's just one of several different things that the foundation does to help uh, raise money for the initiatives that we're involved in. Uh, what are some of the details concerning the event this year? Uh, our golf outing this year will be held on Monday, June 18th at Catanon Country Club uh, at 11 o'clock tea time. Uh, again, we'll plan on having a, a nice uh, brunch for, for the the participants and, and the people who are willing to come out and help out. And this is one of our uh, biggest fundraisers. We get a lot of funding in from this event, uh, which is great for us because it helps us supplement the costs of, of our education or educator grant initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, so if uh, anybody's willing to donate uh, tea sponsorships or cart sponsorships, uh, we'd love to have that happen. Uh, and they, again, can access that on the website as well. Right. Um, yeah, right on, the, if you go to the district website, far right-hand side of the page, there's a link that says Foundation. If you click on the golf outing information there, uh, it'll have the itinerary, all forms that you can uh, simply donate if you want to donate to the Foundation. Uh, for the outing, you could uh, sign up a foursome. Uh, this isn't uh, excluding the public or the community in any way. Um, anybody, business or private, may, uh, may join, and, and hopefully we'll see you out on the golf course there on June 18th. Okay, we're going to take a short break now, and uh, when we come back, we're going to go on location to talk to Mr. Tom Dinga, the ASD Foundation's Vice President. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. We're back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. We're now going on location to talk to Mr. Tom Dinga, Vice President of the ASD Foundation. Okay, Mr. Dinga, how will the iPad cart be implemented in your school and what age groups will benefit from this? We're excited about the the new iPad cart and, and usage in our building because, um, as some people know, our building's set up with an upstairs, and that upstairs area uh, is hard to get to with any cart. Currently, we have laptop carts that are down in our fifth and sixth grade area, but those carts aren't uh, transportable upstairs. So to be able to have this iPad cart to be used exclusively upstairs solves that uh, logistical problem of uh, trying to get uh, any type of technology upstairs beside our computer labs. So the third and fourth grade uh, will be using this uh, to start out and um, we hope to expand uh, certainly down into our first and second grade classes. I think we'll, uh, to begin with, we'll start with third and fourth because that is the area that is upstairs and uh, we'll see how it's used. 
Okay, now this is a pilot program. Uh, what aspects of this program will you be monitoring? And uh, is there a standard predetermined way of how they uh, will be used or is it up to the individual teachers? The important factors uh, for me personally to look at uh, with the usage of the card is first of all is, is how much they are being used and are the time allotments that we'll give teachers to use the iPads, are they sufficient? And uh, so that scheduling will be fluid as we uh, start out, just so uh, until we get a feel for if uh, teachers need more time for the classes or maybe less and how we can divide that up. So the usage will be important. And, and also uh, what we're finding with apps and sites and what are the more uh, pertinent uh, apps and sites that fit, uh, especially our third and fourth grade level students. Uh, our teachers here at Lenape do an, a fantastic job of collaborating. And as soon as uh, someone finds something that certainly helps our kids, uh, we share that and take time to uh, get together and, and explore those sites together. So uh, that will also be important. And certainly the feedback from staff as well as students about uh, how they're enjoying using the iPads and, and the sites that they're enjoying uh, as they explore with that will be all important factors for us uh, as we move forward. Okay, now what direction do you ultimately hope this program will go? I think ultimately uh, what we hope we get out of uh, the iPads is to uh, further uh, help us in finding students' instructional levels and from those instructional levels uh, uh, pushing and expecting students to grow from those levels. And what we found with uh, the technology we've used so far uh, in our computer labs is that uh, it does a great job in connecting with our curriculum. Uh, our curriculum, uh, both in math and reading and any of our subjects, uh, has a, a very leveled component to it. So we have students that can find where their uh, level is and we work certainly from those levels. So I think with the iPads, with using um, different apps and things that we discover along the way, uh, being able to find those levels for kids, and that gives a teacher a base to, in which to work from and to uh, get growth from those uh, levels and uh, certainly uh, expand students' knowledge uh, from their instructional level. We're going to take one more break, and when we come back, we will discuss what EITC dollars are and what it means for businesses who donate to the ASD Foundation. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. We're back with Education Today, and now we're talking with Kristen Robertucci, the CFO of F&M Bank. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, earlier, we mentioned another source of money that the foundation uh, has available to it. Could you speak about what EITC money is and how it's used? Sure. The um, EITC stands for Educational Improvement Tax Credits. It's a program through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that allows businesses to donate money to approved um, educational organizations and in return they get a credit on their tax liability for that year. Okay. Uh, now how does an organi organization come about acquiring or applying for this type of money? You go to the state's um, website under EITC and there's an application form in there that goes through step by step you know what you need to do to apply for the credits. Okay, now the, the website that they go to, is it like uh, through the Treasury Department? Or? It's through the um, Community of Economic and Community de Development. Okay. Um, uh, is there anything else that, uh, that you can explain to us about what EITC money is or anything to that effect? EITC money can be used for both education and scholarships. Okay. Um, you apply for each individually and then the state will you know, award you, you know, so much money. 
And actually, it's like taking money that you would have paid to the state, and mm -hmm. that money would have gone anywhere in the state, and actually directing it to local organizations you know, that you are familiar with, that you understand um, how they are impacting you know, the children in your communities. Mm -hmm. So it's really <coughs> taking money and keeping it local. Okay, a good way to control, uh, you know, when you want to do something good for the community, a good way to control uh, what it's affecting then. Absolutely. Uh, now, I'll take one step away from it from the EITC. For businesses interested in donating to uh, organizations like this, especially for um, nonprofit organizations uh, such as ours, the ASD Foundation, uh, what does that mean for the businesses? Um, like the ASD Foundation? Yeah, for example, if, if uh, uh, for instance, Genon uh, was one of the major donors that made the weather bug equipment possible for our school district, and they, uh, they donated money uh, in a way such as that, the foundation's a nonprofit organization, so does this, uh, what does that mean for businesses? Um, I don't want to say a perk for donating to a nonprofit, but um, maybe what, they, what it means for them to, to be able to donate. Well, it means that they'll get a, um, a tax credit, okay. you know, for their business or their organization. Okay. You know, plus it's also, you know, good corporate citizenship. Right. To say that, you know, we're, you know, giving back to the community, you know, where we operate and live and, you know, where our children go to school. Right. And um, for our foundation, the donors who do donate to us through any sources or any means, both for the golf outing, which we mentioned earlier, and the EITC dollars, which we sometimes receive, um, all of those uh, businesses, organizations, we do recognize them. We want the community to know that what they're doing for their community and for their school district especially. Um, obviously, the students are a crucial part of, uh, of the community around here, and um, for any community, that is, and everything that we can do as a foundation to give back to those students to help build this community is, is fantastic, and we can't do that without... Uh, these EITC dollars without the community's uh, businesses who, who support us. So, um, Is there anything else that you wanted to add about EITC monies or anything to that effect? I just encourage all businesses to really explore it as an opportunity for them to um, you know, make a worthwhile contribution you know, to their you know, local um, nonprofit groups. You know, it's certainly available. Um, you know, this program was started, I believe, back in 2001, mm -hmm. and, you know, every year, um, fortunately, you know, the state is, is able to make, you know, these funds available for organizations to apply for. So I, I urge all organizations or companies to really go out there and see what they can get as far as, um, you know, approval for, you know, these uh, donations. Okay. Um, thanks for explaining all that informa information to us. Um, we thank you, uh, Christian Robertucci, C CFO of FNM Bank, for joining us and talking to us about EITC money. We're going to take uh, one last short break here, and we'll be right back with Armstrong School District's education today. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. Welcome back. We're going to wrap things up here, but first a few last comments uh, from ASD Foundation Board President Lisa Lambert. Um, now we did mention a couple of the other, um, or earlier we mentioned uh, some of the representatives who who work with the foundation. A couple we talked about some retired teachers. Uh, one of the recent or current teachers we have is Randy Cloak. Um, he was uh, was a director of development. Um, uh, he recently stepped down from that role, uh, but he will remain on with the foundation. Um, a secretary is uh, Sharon Porterfield, and another um, uh, two two of our business representatives were Clem Rosenberg from F and M and and uh, Autumn Vorp Seiler from. Northwest Savings, and um, then of course the, our treasurer for the depart for, for the foundation is uh, Eric Brandenburg, who's the current uh, business manager for the uh, school district here in Armstrong, um, and as well I serve on the board in the capacity of an executive director for the foundation. So uh, 
we wanted to make sure that we gave full recognition to everyone on the board. I don't think that um, that we're missing anybody at that point. And I think that's everyone. I think we covered everyone there. Um, now, we just uh, spoke about EITC dollars uh, with uh, Chris and Robert Tucci there from FNM Bank. Um, uh, what have we received from uh, in, a, in a form of EITC dollars uh, since we've started receiving money? Well, we've only been a part of the program for the last three years, and in that time, we have received over $90,000 in EITC dollars. That is a major contribution to this organization, and uh, we could not do the things we are doing now without that type of money coming in. So. Now, uh, this has to be, uh, to receive the money, uh, our foundation has to be state approved in order to do that. Um, could you explain a little bit about how these state approvals work and um, the programs that uh, we now have that are state approved? Correct. We, we apply to the state um, for the ETC dollars. Actually, we have to come up with programs that we want to funnel the money toward. And right now, currently, the ASD Foundation has two pro state approved programs that we funnel money to, and one is our uh, plant, traveling planetarium program, mm -hmm. and uh, that what it is is a large, um, I'm sure we've talked about this before on the show, sure. a large mm -hmm. blow-up planetarium that the kids just absolutely love. Um, they can fit a whole classroom inside, and it's like looking at the night sky within the planetarium. Right. Um, the other program is our STEM program, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And so any of those areas that we can funnel money to within the STEM program, uh, we are able to do. And one of the new and exciting programs coming up, I think you're going to talk about later with uh, Mr. Dingo. Right. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we spoke with uh, Tom earlier in the show, and that, uh, you know, that was obviously the reference to the iPad carts that we're going to be having implemented at Lenape Elementary School um, and, and just recently are, are having taken care of. Uh, one of the things that we talked about, we had uh, the uh, technology show. We do, we do a show every year on ASD technology, and uh, Brad Schreckengoss, the uh, uh, technology director for the school district, was down here. Uh, there was a mention about iPad, the iPad carts that are going to be coming out um, and some different uh, initiatives and technologies that we're working with the technology department on. Um, you know, there are a lot of budgets being cut, and one of the things that this foundation has been able to do is help Brad and his technology department kind of supplement some of the things that teachers were really hoping to try to do, things that they're hoping to do. And I think it's important to note that uh, when these teachers apply for these grants, one thing that is taken into consideration when we decide what we are going to fund is, are these technologies and are going are they going to work with what the district's currently using and are they going to help with the direction that they're going to and I think that that's something that we've been able to to make sure that that we're doing for right them. absolutely and with more EIT, EITC dollars coming in we with the iPad program is a pilot program for us right. we would like to see one in every school in the district eventually and that's really one of our big dreams right now is right. to get those up and running in every school Obviously, with these iPad cards, like you said, it is a pilot program, and hopefully we're going to be able to continue to supplement the technology department by, um, by getting more of these iPads rolled out in the district. And uh, it's something we obviously look forward to. It's something that we need to be able to continue to help them with. And obviously, that starts with the businesses in, the community, in our community and the community members um, helping donate to our programs, so that way we can continue to, to do this into the future. So um, that's our show for tonight. Every year, the ASD Foundation gives our students more and more reasons to look forward to going to school so that they can take advantage of these great opportunities. And now with the addition of the weather bug station and all that can be done with it, and the iPad additions to the district, there are even more exciting things to look forward to. With all that the Foundation does, what's on tap for next year? I'd like to thank our guests, Mrs. Lisa Lambert, Mr. Kirk Lorgan, and Mr. Tom Dinga of the ASD Foundation, and Ms. Kristen Robertucci, the CFO of FNM Bank, for, be for being on the show. I'd also like to thank all the foundation donors, individuals, retired teachers, companies, big and small, because the ASD Foundation lives by donations. And we also need to thank our film crew. Today we had containing high school students led by their teacher, Mr. Don Swanson. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. DVD copies of this and all Education Today programming can be requested by contacting myself, Chris Garitano, at the Arm at containing Junior High School in the Armstrong School District. Visit our website for updated news and information about the district and have a great week.